for asset performance and connecting them, complete the picture. So I mentioned BIM before. That means two things for us. We, we accomplish better project delivery for assets by way of greater breadth of information mobility, and that's on the CapEx side. But we also, and in CapEx, our products for design modeling and analytical modeling and construction modeling are part of creating that digital enterprise <coughs> potential that I talked about, the BIM potential, if you like. Much should be expected from us at Bentley Systems because ARC's research shows that we lead or are close in many aspects of digital infrastructure important to you and your readers. Uh, but BIM means something else for us. At the same time, better asset performance. And the big <coughs> part of that is greater depth of information modeling for OpEx. And so here we add asset performance modeling as uh, part of going digital. And that, as I say, would realize the potential for the digital enterprise. And much should be expected of us at Bentley Systems here as well, because in ARC's rankings, uh, we also uh, lead in categories of reliability software. So for us, we want to advance in both CapEx and OpEx at the same time. We could call that TODEX. And of course, we mean to take cost out of TODEX. And the digital enterprise and its realization would put all that together in going digital. And wouldn't it be great then if every uh, manufacturer or process owner would have a ET environment with digital engineering models of this sort from our software, which could link into the OT inputs, for instance, MindSphere, and the IT attributes for uh, an immersive, contextual environment of uh, this sort. And that is much to be desired, and, and you will go away with a, a yearbook of the Be Inspired projects who've won awards in doing that sort of thing with our software. One of those, the winner in asset performance this year was Dan Foss. They have been doing remote monitoring of refrigeration. They used to be in the refrigerator business. Now, new business model, they're in the refrigeration business and have been remote <coughs> monitoring that. And so uh, my friend Richard Ruth has my favorite title. Uh, title. He's a product manager of services. And Dan Foss is going to speak here at uh, the ARC Forum. And we have helped Dan Foss advance this year from tracking and monitoring to using deep learning to predict uh, refrigeration and energy. But I want now to go to the example of Emerson. They're a finalist this year in asset performance in our competition. And they use our asset-wise amulet operational predictive <laughs> analytics for their integrated operations center in Texas, and it, it starts with a skid of the plant environment, and the Integrated Operations Center is all about not needing to go to the field for engineers, and so that Operations Command Center needs to be kept up to date. So they actually bring in a different skid for each manufacturer, but that's great if this picture were complete. But as Jagannath said, it's a brownfield economy, and 98% of plants you wouldn't have necessarily the same digital engineering models uh, we showed earlier. We have an advantage <coughs> even more <coughs> because the virtual world in which design and analysis occurs and the asset performance real world have in common geo coordinates. Everything is this, it has a 3D geolocation and a technology we call reality modeling can bring that together. Reality modeling uses digital photography. For instance, in this case from a drone, this substation in France, 286 images from a drone were then supplemented with some handheld photos <coughs> from the ground. And you see that this is a reality mesh that goes right into the engineering environment uh, and, and can even be continuously surveyed, because unlike laser scanning, this process from photography doesn't need any special equipment or special operators. But if you had photos, for instance, in maintaining this rail bed, uh, the photos might not have the detail you would like, 
So in the UK, trains can have a laser scanner mounted on them, and then you would have scanned input of the rail bed, which you can now, with our software, process in context, so you have a reality mesh <coughs> combining photography <coughs> and laser scanning in this process of continuous surveying. And for instance, in this reality mesh here on the rooftop, each of the dots represents where a photo is taken from a drone or walking around. And in inspection, we might like to have a closer look, but it'd be difficult to look through the photos until we use the 3D immersive image to find <laughs> what we're looking for and then bring in the photograph and go to where we want in the high definition, even to find uh, the tags and drill down from there, for instance. So I proposed that we could call that inspectioneering, and that was an actionable opportunity for plant operators today. In inspectioneering, the, in, the engineer at his desktop will have the benefit of the continuous survey. For instance, there's that substation again, but it's brought into the engineer's engineering <coughs> environment, for instance, our Bentley substation tool, and he can engineer in this round field, for instance, to replace that transformer or to look at its failure <coughs> and, and degradation and expected life from its nameplate and so forth. Now, uh, photography is interesting. Here in the field, uh, this inspection would take note of spalling, for instance, and with photographs taken by that fellow there and uploaded to our reconstruction cloud service, as soon as that, uh, the inspector could be helping the inspectioneer. He's now an engineer who has access to the field conditions in 3D. He has access to something else as well, the digital engineering models. For instance, the rebar at that location to determine if in the simulated case, there's really risk of failure and safety. Now, something about <coughs> drones that we've learned in the past year. So these folks are experts, and they are doing a existing conditions survey of a communications tower here. And they're doing what they think is the right thing. They're taking 600 images of it. It's going to be processed with our context capture software into this reality mesh and you see it might be useful for something, but if you have in mind structural integrity and corrosion, that doesn't look like a sufficient model for the purpose. So the point is that the inspectioneer, he knows what he needs detail of. He should be the one programming the drone. He has done here. And the 600 photographs, for instance, can be taken from the right place, focusing on, on what he, where he knows there's uh, a problem or a degraded, uh, degraded condition to monitor, and it turns out to be it's not the case that a drone can't do a good job on a communications tower, it's just that the engineer needs to program the drone, as we've learned uh, in this uh, past year. So I want to go back to helping Ener Emerson here. So that's an operation center involving this skid. Well, could we have the digital twin in effect of this skid? So our folks went to Texas, took a few photographs of that particular skid, and this is the reality mesh, which wouldn't have to be crated in, would it, to the remote, to the integrated operations center. That could be brought in from the continuous survey continuously. So here's a plant captured uh, with uh, photography and uh, reconstruction, <coughs> and then using tools to recognize uh, and classify the components that are in the plant so that we can inquire into their properties and then next connect them up with uh, Mind Connect and so forth for their existing conditions here going into the schematics and using the immersive contextual model from continuous surveying to provide access to the whole of the digital enterprise for our operating plan. Now that can be done, here's uh, context capture mobile. In this case, it's a simulated situation. Our intern in this case, uh, we've, we've got a, a pipe rack here of source just to, to show the concept. Uh, it's gonna be photographed and then reconstructed so that 
there is a digital engineering model, a reality mesh model, available for purposes now <coughs> where we're going into maintenance and operations <coughs> and suppose that this alarm keeps sounding here, which is maybe why this inspector is there creating something for the inspectioneer to work with. But he now is in the office and he's going to work out a maintenance solution. He's the engineer. He's, he's using a Microsoft HoloLens in this case. The, he's got the digital skid, if you like, in his operation center and is going to work out a uh, design here, uh, for instance, using our uh, design modeling applications to find a safe and convenient place that would be well informed because he can actually walk in the shoes of the maintenance person in finding this <coughs> solution. Well, that could be helpful, but suppose Emerson doesn't really need to bring in a skid, but rather now, this is the reality mesh captured with some photography on site a few minutes ago or with a drone and brought virtually into the operation center, but there is no operation center here. Uh, the engineer is now using a hollow lens in an empty room, but he's likewise uh, immersed in the maintenance solution, which will be very well informed in this case uh, with a digital enterprise replacement for the notion of needing a digital skid and an integrated operation center, therefore always available. So that's the kind of thing that we and Siemens have in mind to work on. We announced in November our joint initiatives to have, if you like, the physical uh, digital engineering models that our users create work with the functional digital engineering models that Siemens uh, does very well at. And the CEO of Siemens Process Automation showed this example at our conference. Here it happens to be that same plant captured uh, with digital photography and our context capture software. Siemens has an application in this case they call Walk Inside being used here for health and safety simulation, perhaps to, to train someone if there is this safety problem in the plant, where to go to uh, turn off the, the, the safety <coughs> switch and so forth. But from this immersive environment to interface to the Siemens Comos engineering system, for instance, uh, to look at the schematics behind this piece of equipment, uh, and then we would now use uh, MindSphere to go behind this to the OT environment uh, as well. So in December, Siemens had its annual innovation day. This is the chief strategy officer describing what we're working on together. Let's see if we can hear it. We have announced a strategic co uh, collaboration with Bentley. That's a very important step. We have a very strong offering in our process automation solutions with Comos, which is a two-dimensional planning and design tool for process automation plans. And we're now combining that with the extremely leading 3D planning capabilities that Bentley offers. So, so combined, we will have an unparalleled and unbeatable combination of offerings for designing uh, of process automation plans and, and manufacturing situations. But Bentley offers more. Bentley offers software tools to design, plan, and manage distributed infrastructures, maybe rail infrastructures, building infrastructures, grid infrastructures. So with the collaboration of Bentley, we are extremely powerful way, found a very powerful way to enable the digital capabilities of our infrastructure divisions, mobility building and, and energy management. So it happens that we don't have any new press releases for you today. You'll go away with a folder of our recent press releases. The most recent of them is uh, last week at Distributech with Siemens to talk about indeed working with energy management as we will be working in this case with all the divisions uh, of Siemens and especially starting with MindSphere for all the good reasons you just heard, those who are with us uh, for the Siemens uh, conference. And our role will, to, will be at the level of MindSphere apps to integrate for integrated engineering with the digital engineering models from Bentley or otherwise uh, for and especially <coughs> to bring this immersive 
<coughs> interface that I showed, and for instance, which can start to pay off this year for your readers in their inspectioneering <coughs> functions for the benefit of, benefit of all of us in realizing the digital enterprise. Thank you. <coughs> Be glad to have your questions. Yes, please. <laughs> Dick. Um, you made an interesting, uh, you used an interesting term, industrializing BIM. Could you elaborate a bit on that? So by BIM, it initially meant building information modeling. That's kind of forgotten, and it's, if you go to China now, for instance, every, infra every asset project, every construction project has a BIM division, a BIM director, and so forth. It just means making things smarter. It has been applied generally in the realms of infrastructure, of road and rail and water and so forth. When we talk about industrializing BIM, I mean not only applying what I'm showing here in the industrial realm, I mean implying industrial processes for <coughs> designing and constructing and operating plants and industrial uh, assets. <coughs> it's all about more replication, more fabrication, um, <coughs> distributed path of construction, mm -hmm. uh, what we call uh, work phase planning and so forth, making more of a manufacturing process out of construction projects everywhere would be industrializing them. And we in Siemens together think we have a lot to contribute to that. Great question. Next question. Thank you. Yes. Is there a, you know, you mentioned all the photography, is there a video aspect to this at all? So the, the way in which you can reconstruct 3D from photographs depends only on their overlapping. And the only limit to the accuracy is to what degree they overlap. When you're doing video, you're automatically doing overlapping mm -hmm. photography. So video is the very best source of uh, the photography, and it's why drones are such a natural uh, instrument for the digital photography that goes into reality model. So, but I mean, in the case of the tower, would you take like that 6,000 pictures and stitch them together to make a, a moving image if you needed it? Uh, yes, the longer, the, uh, well, um, you're, you're going to be immersed in the, in the 3D model. You can bring it up on your phone in a browser and, and walk around and look around and so forth. It doesn't have to move. But the, if you have 6,000 photographs, you're going to get a higher degree of resolution than 600. <coughs> and, and a drone flight is an easy way to do that. One can imagine in a plant having uh, permanently uh, stationed cameras. And I, and I anticipate just as the inspectioneer today was programming the drone, in the future the, the engineer will be, when, when, when he does a design, will be specifying where the cameras are to be embedded. The cameras that are disposable and will be you know, renewed periodically and so forth. And, and video alone is a wonderful means of monitoring asset performance. For instance, if you think of instrumented bridges, you can do almost as well as instrumenting a bridge with sensors and, and the gravitometers and so forth by videoing what happens when a truck crosses the bridge. Uh, the, the displacements, you know, our, our structural analysis software used to analyze and build most bridges in the world can, is doing almost as well without bothering the instrument <coughs> bridge <coughs> If you can find <coughs> it. These things are changing every year. It's really, and machine learning to analyze the videos we'll be talking about next year. Great, Terry, when will the Bentley apps be ready for the MindSphere? Our, our, we've had teams in Germany for uh, most of the past month, and it, it will be uh, next quarter, I think. We'll have the first of those. It, it's, uh, there's, there's, it's, it's quite interesting. You don't need to rely on the traditional you know, librarians. Uh, we have lots of uh, reliability software you're familiar with that, that works with that. But, but this democratizing the process of, and, and securing the process of uh, the OT to combine with the IT and ET, uh, we're very enthusiastic about it. Thank you very much. We can uh, be done on time.